Yo, what's going on YouTube and welcome back to another Destiny video and another Bungie update. It's that time of the week again, the update has just gone live, there's a lot of cool stuff to talk about and I'm here to give you the lowdown. And the main topic of conversation this week is guns. If you do enjoy this video or you find it helpful, it'd be amazing if you could hit that like button and leave a comment down below. Now let's talk guns. In last week's Bungie update, they told us this week we'd find out more about some of the weapon foundries. And that is exactly what we got. In this week's post, we got a look at Hake, my personal favourite Omelon, and Suros. So let's take a look at them one by one. First up, Hake. Take a look at these screenshots while I give you some background. Let's start with the design pillars behind Hake. Hammers, not scalpels. Relatable design, harkening back to a lost era. Hake is not about exciting form, it is about exciting function, a weapon's weapon, and Hake is the instrument of the people. The tactical analysis behind these reads as follows. Building reliable tools built for soldiers in the field. Hake values simplicity over intricacy. Function over flair. Hake weapons all start with a more tightly focused band of base stats that don't spike as high or as low as the other weapon families, granting a solid foundation for growing the weapon. On a Hake talent grid, you'll see a simplified set of scopes that work best for the weapon. Front loaded perk nodes with the stat upgrade options occupying the final column. Hake perk selection is focused on offensive actions and combat tactics. Hake pulse rifles fire a burst of 4 rounds, with damage adjusted to match the DPS of a 3 round burst, meaning the pulse rifles do less individually but are equal as a group. Plus, the fire time between the bursts is slightly faster. And I've got to say, while they might not look as outlandish as say the Soros ones or the Omelon ones you're about to see, I do like the base design of the Hake ones, it does kind of have that sort of Call of Duty or kind of like real world feel to it, so while this might seem sort of like a weird thing to say, the Hake weapons look more like kind of Activision weapons, whereas the Omelon or the Soros ones that you're about to see look more like Bungie weapons. But either way, they are still pretty cool. So then, moving on to Omelon, which as mentioned, are my favourites. They just look really cool and they've got a really cool feature, which I'll talk about in a second. The design pillars for Omelon are that they are experimental, bordering on irresponsible. They're powered by barely understood technology, a fusion of the mad scientist and product engineer of the new frontier. Hallmark is the liquid ammo displays and Omelon power cells. Omelon is the future return. And the tactical analysis reads as follows. Pioneers of energy weaponry. Omelon is the first foundry to experiment beyond the world of combustion ballistics. Sporting lighter ergonomic frames, Omelon weapons all start with generous base handling stats to build from. Omelon talent grids focus on behavioural perks or stat customization. Legendary talent grids are the only weapons that offer three perks. One as the first non-scope upgrade, and two as the binary choice in the final column. Perk selection favours perks that are energy based and or go beyond the weapon to interact with the wielder's abilities or status. So could that well mean that the Omelon weapons, given their kind of energy link, tie to your actual say ability, so for example if you're like a void walker or like a gunslinger or like a blade dancer, could they well link into say your elemental abilities and could that mean that Omelon weapons for example don't carry an element but instead match whatever element you have. I appreciate that would probably kind of undermine all the other weapons so that might be me thinking a little bit too far out of the box but that could be a pretty cool idea. And also the thing I wanted to mention about the Omelon weapons is the energy cells. You kind of see in the pictures, they've got these sort of like round liquid capsules. Those are actually your ammo indicators. So when these weapons are fired, the liquid does actually deplete and it sloshes around inside the chamber. Really cool stuff. And then lastly, you have Suros. First up, the design pillars are that this is my sword. Function is a given, it must be given full. Design is honed, precision. Every curve, every line, every chamfer speaks to the Suros philosophy. Suros is elegance amidst brutality. And the tactical analysis reads, some say the best weapon for a guardian is the one they can customize to match their intent. Suros believes in options, weapons that can be repurposed for a variety of combat situations. Suros talent grids offer two columns of two stat perks, granting more options for changing weapon stats than any other foundry. The single behavior perk is grounded in the middle of a talent grid as a focus point for the weapon's core potential. If you want a weapon that can flex from CQ to ranged, quick to powerful, fast handling to hard hitting, all with the swap of a few nodes, Suros. So that is some pretty cool stuff. And those screens were only a small sample. There's a lot more for us to see, and obviously a lot more weapon types within those foundries. But for the time being, we're just gonna have to wait. The post also goes on to say, quote unquote, there will be more choices than ever to arm yourself in the tower. 
Factions will have their own guns, classes will have their own guns, more quests will lead you directly to specific guns, even the gunsmith will have a new way to include you in his enterprise. We'll inspect all of that as well before you earn the means to equip yourselves to meet a rising threat. Now there's a couple of things worth extracting from what I just said. First up, classes will have their own guns. And secondly, even the gunsmith will lead you directly to specific guns. Which could well imply that there may well be guns out there for say hunters, titans and warlocks, and also that the gunsmith may well have his own quest for us. In turn, making him more useful than just say selling the occasional weapon and some sort of you know heavy ammo synthesis and some telemetries, which would be really nice. If you could actually go to him, say for like an Omelon quest, and then once you complete it, you get an Omelon weapon, that would be really, really cool. Now, aside from the weapon foundries, this week's post also mentions this week's coming Trials of Osiris. For this week and this week only, they're doing a test. Trials of Osiris will function more like the regular elimination mode playlist, in that it will cycle the maps in the existing rotation. That's Black Shield, Burning Shrine, Pantheon, Cauldron, Thieves Den and Widow's Court. This is, as mentioned, just an experiment for this weekend only, but it does mean that you'll need to be on your toes because every time you fly into a Trials match, it could well be a different map. Then, in addition to that, if you want 9 free strange coins, be sure to check out the Bungie.net post, which I've linked in the description box down below. If you sign up to their mailing list, then you'll get the coins completely free, sent to you on Friday. Sure, it's bribery, but hey, it's free coins. And lastly, there's going to be a hotfix dropping next month, which will address a couple of issues and queries. Namely, those of you that bought the Nepal t-shirt, you'll receive your shader and your emblem. And those of you after the Husk of the Pit, that'll also be fixed next month with an increased drop rate too. The post then draws to a close by saying that in next week's post, we'll be scouting the Dreadnought, which is the new explorable location in the Taken King. So be sure to tune in, because that's going to be a good one. And that, my friends, is it. Let me know in the comments down below which of the Weapon Foundries is your favourite, and thanks again for watching, take it easy, catch you next time, peace out.